Hi, I'm CJ Altenberg of TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in this morning. We have a really special trailer to show you this morning. This is by far my favorite trailer out there right now. Uh, if you're in the market for a show cattle trailer, this is it behind me. Uh, this is a 2022 Cimarron Steerwalt Signature Series. This is a 30-foot air ride trailer. Absolutely loaded out. Uh, we're gonna walk you through the options and walk you through the trailer. But before we do that, let's take a look at the drawing so I can kind of give you a, a good snapshot of this trailer and how it's laid out. So we're 30 foot on the floor, like I mentioned, six foot front tack room, 24 stall area, and then a nine foot nose that I'll explain to you here in a little bit. But we're eight foot wide, and then we're six four tall. So over the years, this trailer, this model has really progressed. Uh, you know, we, when we first started out with this, when Cimarron did years ago with Kirk Steerwalt, they started out with a 28 foot, four foot front tack, and then 24 in the stall area. But as things evolve, we go a little bit bigger. We really start changing the way the trailer's equipped. Uh, there's a lot more functionality to this trailer today compared to those original trailers. Uh, they're still, we're ahead of their times at that point, but boy, have we come a long ways. So this is a sold trailer, but if you find yourself coming to the Blackout 8 in Loveland, Colorado, the Green and Gold Show next weekend uh, in Loveland, this trailer will be on, on display there. Uh, we're also gonna have a 28 foot dirty tack trailer there as well from Cimarron that'll be coming next week. Uh, but the, is, we we're very fortunate enough that the customer that's buying this trailer was allowing us to use this for display and then we'll ship it to him after the show. But a lot of cool stuff on this, so bear with us as we walk through. One of the very first things is, and, and we'll give you a good snapshot at the end of this video when we shut all this up, is you'll notice this thing is shiny. This thing is fully polished. But we'll walk you through that and, and show you some of that stuff. Like I mentioned, we're a nine foot long nose. Standard on Cimarron's 8.2. And the reason why nine foot is we enclose this front end and then we put a, a floor on the bottom of this, but we wanted to lengthen that up. One of the things that I love about Cimarron's compared to other manufacturers is their, their nose length. And even on the, the standard 8.2s, you can have a long box truck with its tailgate down and you still have the ability to walk through that space. A lot of other manufacturers, when you drop that tailgate in a long box, I mean, you're almost right up against a spare tire. There's really not a lot of room but Cimarron really wants to lengthen these out. And then when we do this enclosed front end, we lengthen a little bit more. But that is so cool to be able to protect everything that's back here. I think it finishes this trailer off. I mean, this is a sharp, sharp trailer. Uh, this is a nice touch here. Also, it helps with wind. As wind hits this, it's not gonna kind of capture it back here. It's gonna push it away from the trailer itself. But roll up door, real easy functionality there. Uh, behind here, again, we kind of protect everything. So one of the very first things you notice is usually the spare tires to the left of the jack. This one's located to the right. And the reason why is we said, hey, we're gonna have a box over here. We got the spare over here. We really don't have a lot of space to potentially put some other items underneath here. I mean, this is enclosed. It has a floor to it. So we move the spare over and we put these big four utility hooks. Uh, back in the day, we used to use bridle hooks. Well, bridle hooks were really close together. They weren't very deep off the, the, the actual you know, bracket itself, and then they weren't as deep. Well, we're hauling a lot of big hoses, a lot of big cords, those type of items. So Cimarron's gone in, giving us some width here, more depth to where it actually attaches to the trailer, and then depth vertically as well. So now this is a powder coated aluminum piece here. So this is really strong stuff. But again, it gives us the ability to hook some stuff. I mean, we felt like this was wasted space. Let's go ahead and do something with it. Since it has the floor, you know, that's a great place in my opinion, if you have a tire ramp, some tools, things like that, that if you had to change a spare tire, you know, that could locate there. Then in the middle is where we've got a electric over hydraulic jack. This does have the manual override. I really like that Cimarron options that uh, on their 
hydraulic jacks because if we get in emergency situations, lifting this off a truck or putting it down, we can do that. Then we've got our spare located to the right and then a battery box. Now, there's a couple things we got going on in here. One, it's now standard on the 22 models when you have a hydraulic jack, you get your battery disconnect. The battery disconnect is really important in my opinion. We were really advocating that to be a standard feature on it uh, because when we, you know, this trailer has a lot of lights on it, a lot of switches. If something gets left on, when you park this trailer, you come, to a, come back to a dead battery on this trailer and you can't lift it up or off. Now with the battery disconnect being standard, when we park this trailer, I can reach up there and turn it off and I kill all power to this trailer. So there's your battery. And then located in that box, again, this is kind of customer feedback. Granted, we do have a enclosed front end on this one, but we're really trying to incorporate in putting these air ride systems in these boxes. The reason why is if we didn't have this enclosed front end, it just protects all that a little bit more. Um, you know, now I can also see it. It's usually located over here. You know, it's a little bit harder to reach in maybe and turn your on off switch or your lower or raise knob, also reading the gauge. Now it's all right here in front of us. And again, it's protected behind this. Very simple to use. This is an onboard compressor. So all you do is you push the on button and then you put it in the raise position and you drive down the road. It'll build up to about 140, 145 PSI and then shut off. When you go to put it away, you turn that off, you put it in the lower position and underneath is this little cable. And we pull that cable and that releases any additional air pressure in there because air pressure can create condensation, which then in these real cold months can freeze, crack a line, do damage to the system itself, and then you have an air leak. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that air ride when we get into it, but that's a, that's a really good view of what we've got going on behind this roll-up door. There's a good look at that polish finish. So they did the, the polish sheeting, and then we have the polished extrusion. And again, when we're done with this video, when I give you the stock number at the end, we'll have all this shut up so you can get a real good look at this trailer. It is beautiful. Uh, I mean, they are a really, really sharp looking trailer. Now let's talk back to this front tack room. So again, it evolved from a four foot. Evolved from a four foot to a five foot. Now we're doing a lot of six foot. So all of our 30 foot air ride trailers for inventory purposes are six foot. Now. If you want a custom build, you want to do a seven, you want to do an eight foot, you want to shrink it back down, you can. But if you want this side ramp, we need a minimum of five foot for the framework. So here we have a six foot, but boy, this is really handy for our upright boxes, our blower carts, fan carts, any of those type of items, portable generator. You can wheel them right up rather than lifting them up into this trailer. As you come in to this, there's a couple new things that we've done in here. We did this on our stock show trailer, but you'll notice this gray rubber flooring. So it's got a lot of grip to it, but we really like the way that turned out because we do it here on the floor, we do it on the gooseneck drop wall, and then it rolls up and then comes up here to the gooseneck deck. Not like we reinvented the wheel here, but this became available on some of our Cimarron toy haulers for our garages. We started incorporating it on these trailers. You're gonna see more of it. But it was a customer that built one of these and he said, my wife is not gonna get up there and vacuum out that carpet when we have shavings or feet or anything dug into it. It's a pain. And we kind of took that and said, hey, let's start doing it. I mean, they make a great point. So now you can kind of sweep and just vacuum stuff up so it cleans up a lot better. And then with the grip there, it's gonna allow things from really sliding uh, quite a bit. Now we got a lot, of, a lot going on up here in this gooseneck. We'll start over here on the driver's side. First, we got a 30 amp breaker package. So we have power to this trailer. We have a converter, so it'll convert our uh, 110 to 12 volts, so it'll charge up that battery. And then you see that tray that goes along there. So that's for our plexiglass that I'll show you as we work into this trailer. Now we've tried incorporating more lights in here. Uh, we have a longer nose. So we have a, a light up to the left and then we have lights over each door. But the reason why that light over to the left is because we have this. Now, this bracket and this holder over here 
will hold four 24 inch fans motor down. So you have this real heavy UHMW plastic. So when you put those on there, they'll slide really easily. You can slide them up front. But again, it holds four of those 24 inch fans. Now, this is a, my opinion, a great place to store your um, show sticks or an old show stick, just leave it in here. Because you'll be able to grab the first two fans right here from ground level. But then those next couple up front, you can just use your show stick to grab the cage and pull it back towards you. But once you have them loaded, you can fold this down and then pin this so it holds them into place. We also have a fold down gate so it'll hold these items up in the nose itself. We'll get that out of the way for a second. I'm gonna show you on this gooseneck drop wall. One thing we've done is, is we've done a boot box over to the left. We like the 18 inch boot boxes because it'll hold bigger uh, water buckets. The 12 inch, because of this lip here, it really shrinks it down. It's really hard to get those bigger items in there. But this'll, this is great for smaller miscellaneous items works as a step when you hop into the gooseneck and then if you're showing off this trailer hey you got a bench in here you can sit down uh, you can also send kids in here we have this clothes rod that goes across you can hang clothes uh, they can come in here and change but we've really done this half boot box because we wanted a little bit more floor space uh, again customer feedback the six footer compared to the five footers yes we have an additional foot but the way everything positions and stacks in here when you're talking about those upright boxes and fan carts and blower carts and all those items, everything just fits a little bit better in this type of a setup. So then we went ahead and did some of the airliner track here on the smaller portion. So again, we can wheel something in here and then lock it into position so it's not moving in transit. And then back on the partition wall, we fully carpeted it. And then again, another strip of that that goes all the way across. You can go on like Amazon and buy a whole slug of those uh, little O-rings that are adjustable for these. Um, you can buy them in packs, but then you can kind of again, manipulate where you want them, where you want to put some of that equipment up against the wall. And then up above there, more of those utility hooks. So again, we can hang some bigger items up there. Now I want you to notice that on the inside of this, it's lined with this white sheeting here. And the reason why is because of this polished uh, sheeting on the outside of this trailer, if you were to ding those sheets from the inside, maybe you throw something up here in the neck and it dings that, from the outside it's gonna be glaring and you're gonna hate it. So this just kind of protects that outside. Uh, we always will go in and line um, these fully polished trailers for that reason. It's just a little bit more protection there. So we have lights above each door. So we have a man door that you walk through and then the side ramp. Now, whenever I'm building these type of trailers with these tack rooms with the side ramp is, I will always advocate that we put a man door on here for safety purposes, whether it's this one, whether it's a pass-through door going into the stall area, because if you shut that ramp, you can't get out of this trailer. So we like to go ahead and put the man door over on driver's side. Uh, we can build them however you want. If you want that ramp on this side, it can be done. Uh, but I like having the man door over on driver's side because when you're working, if you have to pull off the side of the road, now you're your street side and then your curb side over here. So we need that ramp to be able to really lay down to where you can kind of sneak in this door a little bit quicker. But we'll kind of show you that as we work to the other side. One of the other things is, is light switches. Again, this is good customer feedback is we'd always have this closest to the man door. Well, a lot of times you're trying to come in through the ramp first and you have all this stuff piled up here so you can't get your switch. So up above your ramp up here in this top rail, we put an additional switch. So now which either side you come in on this trailer, you can just reach up and hit a light. And we like this one up above because more than likely our bigger equipment's gonna be over here we don't want that switch down low. So we wanted that one up high. But it's really nice, again, to be able, whichever side you come in, just reach up and hit that light and turn it on. As we come out, you'll notice an LED load light up above there. That's a 16 inch awning light. We do a couple per side on these trailers, but this one right above, because we understand there's gonna be times where it's gonna be dark and you're loading and unloading right here. The other thing is these ramps, 
are really easy to use. Even, even smaller kids can lift these up. Cimarron does a really good job on the springs. I mean, once it almost gets to a point, it breaks over and just sucks into the trailer itself. You can go ahead and shut these latches here. These do lock as well. So everything's key to like on this trailer with the exception of your battery box. So all these tack doors and then these ramps can be locked up. Now on the back, you'll have to use a padlock, but I'll show you that. So as we get here to the stall area, side ramp shifted back a little bit, kind of a personal preference. Some customers like them up directly behind the tack wall. This one's shifted back just ahead of our axles. But as you can see, there's an additional gate that goes across there. So this customer opted for that. If you're showing off this trailer or even potentially using this for tie outs, we do have some exterior tie rails that I'll show you, but you can throw some cabs in here and shut this gate. So if you're showing off of it and wanna to toss something in there, you can leave your ramp down, but then also have this gate that'll swing. We like to run it a couple inches off the top. So again, so no calves are trying to get their heads up or anything like that. Another load light as you come in. And again, as these trailers have evolved, we used to have a traveling gate up front with a fixed gate 9.3 off the back. So you had the ability to have, you know, multiple stalls but then you were limited on that back fixed gate. So over the years, we've gone to two traveling gates. That's been the way we've ordered them probably over the last five or six years. They, all of these for inventory are gonna have two traveling gates because now, as you can see, we have one slid back, one up front. We have two stalls, then I can incorporate that one. Then we have three, but then you can really manipulate the size of them all you want. Maybe you have a bull you need separated. Maybe you have a pair that you want separated. Maybe you got some heifers and steers or different age heifers. You can do whatever you want with these. I mean, I can literally slide that gate up and put it up front and then we have one large stall. So that's the only way that we really order them. And we have a lot of customers that want to do that. Now, sometimes even on these, we run these rails farther back. So even if you wanted to add a third gate to these, you could. But we got a lot of stuff going on in here as well. So like I mentioned up front, we have a 30 amp breaker package. So now in the top rail on the left side, there's some, but behind the camera here on the right hand side, you'll notice we have outlets up in this top rail. So now we have power to this trailer. So again, if we're showing off of it, maybe you wanna put some fans or something like that in these trailers, you can do that, but you have power back here. All you have to do is plug into an external power whether that's a portable generator or a plug somewhere, and then you've got power within this trailer. So again, showing off or doing those type of things has really become very easy to do on these trailers. Tie rails, high and low. The bottom one covers that air gap there, kind of right in the middle, kind of protect that. And it's the same way on the passenger side. Now we don't do a high tie rail on the passenger side, we pretty much do the lows and the highs on driver side with the low down there. And again, it incorporates with that fold down slat that I'll show you on the outside. But on these gates, we've almost had to rethink about the way we do things. So, you know, a lot of our old traditional styles, we load on the back of the trailer. So the gate would usually swing towards the passenger side to where here we're doing more loading and offloading off the side ramp. So we've really put a lot of emphasis on swapping the hinges over to make this a little bit more user friendly getting calves on and off. So now I can swing it this direction, walk a calf off on, on the trailer and then step away or vice versa, just walk them off. Now we can do 48 inch swings that this one's equipped with. It's got two of those, no threshold, or we can do sliders. You can do about anything you want. We've had some customers with, they want the slide open the opening over here or they want it over here. We can do that, whatever you'd like there. But boy, these things are really handy to use. I'll show you how easy they are to maneuver. You can set a gate any every foot on this trailer. As long as you're in the middle, it's really balanced and slides very, very easily to a post of your choosing. Lock them into place. there you go. 
These gates do swing both directions for you. So whether you're going in or out with calves, you've got that ability. One of the other things is, is we like to taper the fenders. So Cimarron always tapers up, but we like to go into these 90 degree kind of pockets over here, these corners and taper them as well. We want to kind of protect the calves. We don't like 90 degree angles. So we go in and do that option there. We haven't even talked about the construction of this trailer. You're on an all aluminum trailer with the best floor on the market. It's a 12 inch deck, double tongue and groove, hocks, locks in high and low, but four inch centers when you look underneath this trailer. So wherever you have a calf standing on this floor, they're standing on a support beam. So strongest floor, the strongest upright posts, they're almost a perfect square, but it's the same amount of aluminum that you'll notice on the roof bows. The roof bows are more of a rectangular. You'll see that on a lot of competition. This stick here, 20 foot on the side post, if you pick it up, it's one fluid motion, it's like a pencil. It's where you grab this one here and it's gonna have some wobble to it. So the uprights are a lot stronger on these Cimarron's. They incorporate these up on the roof because we have this insulated roof and that is a half inch thick reinforced honeycomb design with an R3 thermal value. So it is extremely strong, but more importantly, it's gonna keep the staller about 20% cooler. It does make a massive difference compared to aluminum sheeted roofs, the temperature in these Cimarron's. It is a game changer from the standpoint of keeping your calves cool. And that's ultimately what we want, want them to do, especially when we're traveling in these hot summer months. So we have insulated roof, industry's best floor, industry's strongest up, upright post. So you also are, are backed with an eight-year structure warranty and a three-year hardware warranty. So they really stand behind the product itself. So the very first ones were built were six, eight tall. And this will tell you how much difference this makes. Six, eight tall because we're used to aluminum sheeted roofs. We need to get that heat away from cattle. Heat rises. Well, they were finding out that with this insulated roof, it keeps it so much cooler that we can drop the, the height of these trailers down a little bit, making them lower profile, you know, not dragging as much wind. And if you stand here in the middle, you're about six, six in the middle. So. Yes, we're 6'4 on the side, but because of the bow, we gain a little bit there. And then you have two-way roof vents, so we can manipulate airflow in this trailer. You can manipulate airflow with our lower gaps, with our upper air gaps. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but again, in here, you just have all the ability to do a lot of different things with the two traveling gates. Again, these ramps, really easy to pick up. Again, as I get to a point, I'll just let it go and it just goes into the trailer. Here's a look at these lower air gaps. So over the years, again, things have progressed. We used to do an air gap with plexiglass down low. Well, more than likely, this is the air gap you're gonna use majority of the time. So they came up with these fold up aluminum slats on the side with these gas shocks. So they're really easy to use. You're not having to pull plexiglass out, put plexiglass in, a lot more user-friendly from that standpoint. You can literally jump out at a stop sign, a stoplight, and run around and open it or close these up. It's that quick and easy. Uh, it also forces air down, in my opinion. When we have these open, air wants to find a way out. So for using those two-way roof vents, it's gonna force that air down and try to come out the side of the trailer. Well radiator on a calf is its is its chest floor so you think about where they're at it's going to force that air down there and keep them nice and cool now here's our air ride let's talk a little bit about this two 8k axles opted for the spread axle spread axle really helps the way this trailer pulls it's going to pull more like a triple axle it also takes away some of the the tongue weight because of weight distribution when we spread them out the other thing is 18 ply continental 17.5 tires with the Alcoa Durabrites. These are awesome rims. These guys will look like that years down the road. Uh, just a real sharp looking trailer. A lot of good running gear with those 18 ply tires underneath them as well. Uh, one of the other things is, is on this air ride, 
is they're rubber torsion axles with a shock kit. So if something does happen to our compressor, a line or a bag, it sets down on rubber torsion axles, how it's sitting right now, and you can go down the road. Old air ride systems, you were stuck. You couldn't go anywhere. So some people say, I'll never pull an air ride. And you know, they're nothing but trouble. Well, well why? They, we've evolved so much and come so far with the systems. And again, the operation is very, very simple. It's on, raise, and go. And then when we get back off, lower, and clear our line. It's that simple. The other thing too is, is how we have it sitting right now, it's lowered. So this is two and a half inches lower to the ground. So our ramp angles aren't as steep. So in my opinion, you always load your tack and then your animals, especially when it's in the lower position. So again, it's, they're not going up as high. It's not as steep on those ramps. And then it's real simple to just turn it on and put it in the raised position before you leave. But this air ride system, talk to customers that are, have been using these over the last few years. The very first thing and most common thing I hear from customers is I'll never pull another one without it it makes a difference it really does uh, you know you can peel a lot of time off on the front end of a uh, going to a show from the standpoint of recovery time well now you're not gone from home an extra day maybe you're not paying labor an extra day and you're not paying for additional hotel rooms so it is an, a, an additional cost to upgrade to air ride but when you factor that in over the life of this trailer all the shows all the cattle you're going to put on this trailer it's minimal now these are 8Ks. When we go with a bigger trailer, when we want to add length to this, we want to go to 9K axles. And there's a couple things that happens when we do that. Those wheel wells are deeper on the inside of the trailer, but also your price jumps up substantially from your 8Ks to your 9Ks. That's why for inventory purposes, we keep a lot of these 30 footers. It's right in that nice, happy spot where the engineers, everyone's comfortable with the 8Ks, but when we go with a bigger trailer, we wanna to go to 9Ks. So again, that does change things. We can go nine and 10K axles if you'd like to, but the eights are more than adequate on this trailer as it sits right here. Here's that plexiglass on the upper two. So these can, all these Cimarron's, these stock trailers have this notch in it and the track already built for plexiglass. So it's real easy sliding it in and out. You always do it in sections. Passenger lower, then passenger upper, but try to keep them lumped together. Uh, I like masking tape and a Sharpie. I can write passenger lower, tape them together, passenger upper. So when we go to put them back, it's real simple. I know where they're going. Tie rails, high and low. So if we wanted to tie out or we're showing off this trailer, you want to tie a calf up, you can. That's on both sides of this trailer. There is an option that you can do a tie rail across the actual wheel wells as well. It just attaches to the current uh, tie rail on the outside, but if you needed to do it on one length of this trailer, we can do that. So there's always add-ons we can do after the fact. You have button lights, that's standard on these trailers. Uh, now, they're real, in my opinion, they're really sharp. They, they really give a lot of light, but it's a cleaner look to this trailer. So there's a bunch of them going down the top rail. So this trailer really dresses up nicely uh, when it is night and you're driving down the road. <coughs> okay, as we get to the back, kind of standard stock trailer, we have a swing gate. So it gives you a real good big wide opening to the back of this trailer. We also have our load lights at the back, two eight inch uh, load lights at the back. But on this swing gate here, there's a couple things we do. One of the first things I'm a big advocate of slam latches, uh, and the reason why is just for safety purposes. So Cimarron's come up with a slam latch to allow us to get this gate to hold in, in place as I then can go over and grab my cam latch and put it in place. So real simple to use. Again, I, I like them from the just safety standpoint. <laughs> if you are having to throw a big load on here and need to just shut this quickly, you have that ability. Then you have this slider gate that comes across as well. Now we've gone in and done these as a 36 inch wide opening. We have a wider trailer, eight foot wide. On our narrower trailers, you know, this gate can't go all the way across. So then it really narrows up that gap. Well, there might be times where you're gonna bump up against somebody and jump something across in a parking lot somewhere when you get these sliders 
uh, butted up against each other. So we like the 36 inch wide for that purpose of maybe it's a fat steer, maybe it's a bread heifer, maybe it's a bull. Just having that a little bit wider is, is definitely a nice little touch there. The other thing too, and Cimarron's done this over the last year here, is a wider rubber bumper. It kind of seems a little bit silly, but they were using the same rubber bumper that they used on the horse trailer. So it wasn't as deep off the trailer. But if you look down the side of this, we have hardware sticking out. So when we do go to butt up against somebody, we need that rubber bumper to be a little bit deeper, you know, a little bit wider off the trailer for those purposes. So that's a nice little touch there they've done. There's switches on the back for our lights. Um, I don't think I mentioned it on the side ramp as we come into the stall area. Again, we added switches to run the right-hand side load lights, but also those interior lights. So again, if you're coming off, you don't have to come to the back, but you do have the ability to here uh, to run each individual side. One thing that you're gonna start noticing a lot on our inventory is backup lights. These trailer, trailers are getting longer and longer. Why not have the ability? Because when you put your truck in reverse, that light is so far ahead of this trailer that it really does you no good. So we're putting a lot of load, or uh, excuse me, uh, reverse lights on these trailers because again, we understand that you will be loading and unloading at night and it's nice to have some light coverage. There's a good look at that lower air gap completely opened up. Again, so simple to use. I'll just work my way up and as you can see how quick and easy it is to open and close these. Another feature that we do a lot on our eight wide trailers, bigger, longer trailers is an amber turn signal. This will indicate when you hit your brakes, when you use your turn signals, and as an additional marker light. People really don't pay attention to trailers. If they're at the back, kind of right at the back of this trailer, you know, and you turn your blinker on, they're not gonna see it. It's a long ways up to your truck. Again, this will indicate saying, hey, I'm trying to get over. Uh, just, in my opinion, just those type of little items, it's a small upgrade, but boy, it's really nice. And we've gotten great feedback on them. And again, we incorporate them on about every eight foot wide trailer and on these bigger trailers, especially our living quarters, trainer trailers, these big ones here all have that. Then you've got your escape door. So you can hop into the stall area from right here. There is a step as well. We really like steps. You'll notice it on the front tack door here in a second. But, you know, if you go flat footed from where I'm at, we gotta get clear up here to where that frame is. That's about an eight inch gap there. By having that step in the middle, it's really easy transitioning in and out of these trailers. And then there's our man door going into the tack room. Again, fold up step. But again, we like that for safety purposes, having that additional door on these tack rooms. They fold up really simple. They have the same gas shock you notice on the fold down air slats on the side. As you can see, this is an absolutely loaded trailer, very well equipped. Uh, this was something we actually had on order. Customer called in, we still had time to make changes and then we transitioned it to what he wanted. So we have trailers on order that we can still maybe change for you or we can kind of start from scratch and do whatever you want. So I'm gonna give you the stock number on this trailer just for reference, again, it is sold. It is a 2022 Cimarron Steerwalt Signature Series 30 foot air ride, 5N 211786. So give us a call, anybody on the sales team can help you out. Again, if you happen to find yourself at those shows in Loveland next weekend, come by and see it. And then we'll have again a 28 foot dirty tack sitting there as well. Our number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.